We do indeed, Jamie. We've been very fortunate because my hyena whooping is no good. It's not very good at all, but I'm sure your dwarf mongoose will come out. It is a good plan, and I was thinking about it the other day, is just sitting with a sort of little group of mongoose all morning and seeing if maybe we could try and get them to get habituated towards us. It would be so much fun if we could to watch their sort of antics as they play around. So it's definitely a good idea, and I wish you the best of luck for that. Now, there's been lots of whooping happening south of us, so it seems that there is those other two that we saw earlier have gone further south and they've been calling quite a bit, but n as yet nobody else has arrived back at the den. I was hoping that there would be. I've heard some birds alarm calling and Franklin's alarm calling, so I'm just keeping an eye out just to see if maybe one of them does arrive back. But this female has been in serious sleep mode. You can see it's all been a hard morning. She's obviously traveled quite far, eaten quite a bit, and now it's just time to really rest. She'll pop her head every now and then. Oh, I hear something right here. Did you hear that, Seb? Uh, no, that's, I've got headphones on, so... Something just rustled in the grass close by here. I wonder if there's not a, another hyena on its way. Let's just see if it could potentially be coming this way. It's long, long grass, and... Lots of trees around, so difficult to actually see. But there was definitely something rustling in the grass here. It caught her attention too. She opened her eyes and kind of just looked around for a second. But it seems whatever it was, she's not too phased by it because she's gone back to sleep again and is having a really good rest. Now, if nothing really comes in the next sort of few minutes, I think I'm going to leave her to her nap. I don't want to disturb her too much. She seems like she's really trying to have a good sleep and our talking kind of wakes her up every now and then and if there's no little ones around it's better just to let her sleep and enjoy her morning and we've had a good start to our morning with hyenas we've had lots of sort of movement and action so far so hopefully the others will arrive and we'll be able to continue to stay but otherwise I reckon it's going to be better just to leave her to have a nap but it is definitely not Ruben so I don't know if we've got an idea on who she actually is at this stage but it's not Ruben she's got no sort of suckle marks or milk or anything like that so I don't think it's her at all A little grooming are you sleepy my girl let's just see what she does maybe I love the way hyenas lie like this when they tuck all their feet and push their back legs back <laughs> it's such an odd way to lie but they seem to be the only ones that do it like this I don't know why they find it so comfortable but you'll often see hyenas pushing their back legs out and then their front legs under their chin and then they lie down oh my girl is it a tough morning did you eat too much it's almost like that feeling you have when you've had such a good meal and you've eaten far too much and you've now got to try and just kind of digest. That's how she looks. She's almost like if saying, oh, my tummy is too sore. I just don't want to do anything more after this morning. A good, uh, after a good braai. After a good braai, yes. So for those of you who don't know what a braai is, that is a South African barbecue. Oh, Holly, you want to know what hyena fur feels like? Well, it's like coarse dirty dog hair so if you've ever had a dog and you've seen it running around and rolling around in dust and sort of doing all of those kind of things and then you feel it afterwards it gets quite sort of hard and bristly and and very sort of coarse in its feel and that's exactly what it feels like on the sides um, the top part where you see it's got a little bit of puffy that's a little bit softer but because they don't get washed or cleaned or anything like that they generally do have that sort of dusty harder bristly feel in soft sort of pampered fur um, so they are I mean they do have soft fur around them and I, I would imagine if you washed them and cleaned them and groomed them that they probably would feel quite soft but because of the fact that they roll around in dust and have meat all over them oh yeah it's that hard to get up with that tummy and there's a little bit of a limp there but you can see all the blood on the right side of her muzzle there's lots of red there I think she's gonna try and find a more shady spot to lie down are you going to go to the actual hole of the den? Let's go and see. I wonder if she's going to go and look inside the den and see if the cubs are there. Right, Seb, let me just try and reverse back here quickly. Oh, 
Ah, so some of you do think it's Ribbon. She just looks so big because she's got such a fat tummy, so maybe it is her. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me the fact that she's actually going up to the den now and calling out. So let's just see. I don't want to disturb her too much, but let's see now. So it could be her. Now that she's standing upright, it will be much easier to ID her, and particularly on that right side. I'm going to just try to see. I've got a photo of her here that I want to quickly check. It is definitely Ribbon, and thank you, Crystal. Now you've let us know it's definitely Ribbon, and I've just checked a photo, and it most definitely is her. She looks massive today because of that full belly. She's definitely looking quite big, and now you can see when she's in the sun, it's warming up, and look, she's starting to open her mouth and get quite warm. So let's see if she calls that little one. Now, interestingly enough, she's definitely not producing milk anymore. So if you look earlier when she was lying down, there's no sort of milk that's being produced. So these little ones must be completely off milk now. They're definitely not going to get much from her if they do try. She's got no heavy udders there. And even around her teats, it doesn't look like any suckle marks have been happening for the last few days. So, or weeks, should I say. So definitely not suckling anymore. And let's see now. This will be a, probably a good testament to how many are these cubs are actually left if it is just indeed the only the one so I want to see you while she calls hopefully the one will come out or it would be really nice if both came out wouldn't that be good if we had a surprise and two were there I'm sure that there is only one I know James had one and there, oh, we, go. there we go there's the one let's see if another one comes out hello good morning <laughs> mm. isn't that cute So, Jamie, you're wondering if hyena can have more than one cub at a time. Well, yes, they can have two. So, it is it is not uncommon for them to have two. But she keeps looking into the hole. I wonder if there wasn't a second one inside there. But let's see. I'm sure they'll come in and out. Now that they know mom is home, they'll find that they're going to be up and down and in and out. And, well, I don't know. I think it is just only the one left. Let's see now. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. There's another one coming out. Look at that. There's two. So there is two of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. There we go. So for those of you that thought there was only one, there we go. Both are there. So that is amazing. I don't know if... <laughs> I think everybody's very happy about this little fact. That's so cool. I'm so impressed that there's two of them. I honestly thought that there was only one left. And the fact that one kept coming out by itself and I know James only had one and Jamie's only had one so it was all but this one looks a little bit older doesn't it it's all definitely much lighter mm. I wonder now this is quite interesting but it doesn't look like the same litter that is a much bigger hyena yes. let's just see now when no that is very much bigger that's not the same age at all I'm gonna try go around now crystal if you're watching still watching you know all these hyenas who is this little one that has just popped out and is running down the road because it's just started to run down the road and away from the den? But that's interesting because it's definitely not the same litter, that's for sure. It's a much, much larger hyena than the younger one. I'm just coming around because Ribbon is lying this side, or is this side. There we go. So I wonder who that other hyena is and who she's from. Hello. <laughs> Young hyenas have got to be the cutest animals. So a few of you are wondering if the other one may be Gwen's cub. Well, it's possible, I suppose. It's the right sort of size and age. Sorry, Zeb. I'm trying to get out of your way as much as possible. It's the right sort of size and age for it to be. Um, and also quite skittish. It's just as soon as I started the car, it went r running off into the distance. So it's possible that it is the case. Oh, ooh, this one is full of energy now. Mm -hmm. Mom is back and it's now time to play. There she goes. Now let's see where they go. Hopefully she's going to lie down here. almost like she's taking it with her now remember low-ranking females will sometimes take their young ones to meat they'll actually take them to food so this is interesting I wonder if this might be one of the first times this little one gets led away from the den but let's see it's gonna be interesting now 
there's a shady section there that I wouldn't be surprised that maybe Ruben decides to lie in. Uh, she's continuing to go. Let's. So, David, you're wondering if the Cubs will ever go off on their own without their mother. Well, yes, they can do sometimes. Listen. That's so cool. Now, that sound is of one of the little ones calling. It's not an adult, and you can hear it's a much higher pitch, shorter call than what the adults do. So she's calling. I'm sure it's the one that ran off is calling Ruben and the other cub to come join it, and maybe potentially Gwen, if it is Gwen's young one. So we'll try and see if we can't get there and, and see what's going on. But they do sometimes, when they get a little bit older, when they get to about a year old, they'll sometimes follow their mother and move into, I mean, follow some other hyenas and move away from the den a little bit and kind of go and check around but they generally don't move too far without their moms um, the first few times definitely will be with mom but as soon as they get a little bit older and they get a bit more adventurous then you'll find they often do follow other hyenas away from the den and go and explore the area surrounding the den site I can't see either of them now they seem to have moved off and I'm gonna just try see if I can't find a better picture Canadian Emily you saying this hyena drama is playing with your emotions well I think you're not the only one I think everybody is fairly sort of captivated by what's going on and the confusion that's been happening at this den over the last few weeks and sort of cubs coming in and out and you, oh, I was for a second there thought it was both of the little ones but it's not and it's all kind of very drama filled the last few days so hopefully <laughs> it will all settle down and we'll be able to get a bit more of sort of normal behavior from them now I'm gonna just try and see if I can't go around I don't really want to go bashing through the bush after the cubs because I don't want to terrify them when they're exploring away from the den and they are heading down towards weaver's nest so I think I'm just gonna try and loop around there see if I can't see them from that side and if there's nothing then I'll come back down towards the den itself but I don't really want to crash and create panic ultimately we're trying to get these cubs used to our cars not to get scared of them and create sort of panic in their lives that every time they see us they run away so have got to be a little bit sensitive and while it's amazing that we want to see them I also don't really want to push them too much so if they're not on weaver's nest and I come back to the den and they're not here then I'm probably going to leave them to it I like I say don't really want to create a panic situation but that was cool. It was a surprise to see a second little face pop out of the den. And like I say, I didn't expect that at all. I was convinced that there was just one inside there, but clearly there's another female using this den as well. And that's maybe why we're seeing so many more of the adults around and near the den itself. So, Deviant, you're wondering how many live in a den like that at a time. Well, that particular termite mound is not very big. So I would say probably just those two little ones are inside there. I mean, if there was the third baby that was was there, that would be okay. But it's a, quite a small termite mound, so there's not going to be too many able to fit in there. The most that I've seen, oh, hello squirrel, um, was at a den site on near Elephant Plains. And there we had at one point, we had 12 young ones. So there was 12 young ones and at any one moment you were able to find five or six adults around there so it was really quite a busy den site now we are kind of in line with the den and where these hyenas should come out they might just be lying in the shade here somewhere but like I said I just really don't want to cause too much of a hassle for them and I don't really want to make them scared of the cars and off-roading it's fine to off-road with the adults because they're so used to us that they don't really worry too much, but the little ones, not so much. Right. I'm going to try to see if I can't find them again, but if I can't, it's still been a fantastic sighting of them. 